Hi, I'm Maarten Baljau. Welcome to this series of screencasts on .memory, our .NET memory profiler. Before we learn how to work with it, let's have a crash course into .NET memory management. We will not go too deep, as .NET memory management is quite complicated, but we'll cover the basics so we're on the same page for the duration of this screencast series. Even for a simple console application, .NET creates a large number of objects in memory. Depending on what we're doing, memory will constantly be assigned and released. Objects will reference each other, update those references, set them to null, and then lose these references and so on. Now what if this happens too often? Does it impact our application's performance? And what if we expect an object to be released from memory, but it isn't? That's what we can use a memory profiler for. We want to be able to answer a series of questions. Why is this object still in memory? What takes so much memory and where does it come from? How much allocations and releases are happening? Are we violating any patterns like, for example, are we forgetting to unsubscribe from event handlers? Or are we incorrectly using dependency properties causing objects to remain in memory? Now let's see what happens under the hood in the .NET runtime. When starting a .NET application, the runtime reserves address space for the process. This address space will be managed by the runtime and all of our objects will be allocated in it. Since .NET has this block of memory available, it can simply add a pointer to our object instead of having to ask the operating system for more memory. Now of course, some unmanaged memory is also consumed by the .NET runtime itself, for graphics buffers, dynamic libraries and such. When an object is out of scope, it will still be in memory, but no references should be pointing to it anymore. Every now and then, the garbage collector will check for such objects and remove them from the heap, effectively releasing the memory again. And just like we sometimes have to defragment our hard drive, the garbage collector will also make sure reachable objects are not too spread around the managed heap. The .NET runtime splits the managed heap in segments, Gen 0, Gen 1 and Gen 2. Whenever we create an object, it's allocated in Gen 0. When that part of memory is full, the garbage collector will run and remove unused objects. It will also promote objects that are still in use to Gen 1. The same thing happens when Gen 1 is full. The garbage collector runs and objects are then promoted to Gen 2. And when Gen 2 is full, garbage collection is done across all generations. If at this stage Gen 2 has not enough memory available for allocations, an out-of-memory exception will be thrown. Now why all these different generations? Going through the objects in memory is quite time-consuming for the runtime. Our application will be paused for a brief moment when this happens. To make this pause as short as possible, the .NET runtime partitions its work across these generations, so typically it should only run on a small subset of objects. There's one special heap, the large object heap. Objects larger than 85 kilobytes are stored in this memory segment. Objects in the large object heap are only collected when a full garbage collection runs on all generations. By default, no defragmentation is run on this heap. So if too many objects are on here, or fragmentation is too big, an out of memory exception may be thrown here as well. Dot memory will collect a lot of information while our application is running with a profiler attached. It will collect information about all objects on the managed heap in all generations. Optionally, it can also track creation stack traces, so we know exactly where every object was created in our code. Memory traffic is collected as well. If a large number of objects are allocated and released again, the garbage collector will have to run more often and will cause our application's performance to go down. Using all this information, we can analyze how our application behaves while running and optimize its memory footprint as well as its behavior in terms of requiring garbage collection. One last remark. A lot of people use memory profilers and performance profilers for that matter in case of emergency. It's good practice to make profiling part of the development workflow. We can then see how our application behaves. For example, run that memory after applying changes to the code or introducing a new algorithm. That memory will immediately show us how things are going. Is it getting better? Is it worse? And so on. Thank you for watching. And if you're curious about what's next, Check our other screencasts on how to work with that memory to improve your applications. Till next time!